It's happening today. Today, I'm finally gonna chip away at, at this pile over here that's been slowly building. I'm new to this whole YouTube thing, but part of it seems to be that, that companies like to send you things, which I love, by the way. And uh, I just haven't been able to keep up lately. But today, I'm gonna chip away at a big chunk this whole, this whole chunk over there. I promise to get to all of it because there's some pretty cool stuff in there. People are sending really nice things and I really appreciate it. If you would like to send me your product or thing to review, especially electric skateboards. If any of you have an electric skateboard company, I would love to play with your electric skateboard. But today, today is this whole pile at once. This, oh. This is the viral cable cam. Although I think that they say it viral because they're S Swedish maybe? Because whenever I watch their videos, they refer to it as the viral light. This is the viral light. I have a good buddy from Germany and when he first came over here, he would say Volkswagen instead of Volkswagen. So their W's are V's and I'm pretty sure that's the same with this. I think instead of saying viral light, I'm pretty sure it's viral light. And today's video is gonna be kind of fun because this isn't so much me teaching you as much as this is us learning together. It, it's, uh, it's still sealed in the box, have not opened it. So today we're gonna to learn about the viral light together. I just realized because I haven't opened it, it's not charged. So we're gonna do the unboxing quickly so I can get it charged and we can go play with it before the sun goes down. All right, I have multiple boxes here. This I think is the actual cable cam. This is their travel case, 100 meters of line. I'm pretty sure that's what it runs on. And then, and then some other little bits. Let's open the cam first. Yep. Uh oh. All right. Uh oh. Ooh, all right, check that out. This is the, this is the actual cable cam. Wow, that is a lot smaller than I thought. I've watched the videos on it and I thought it was way bigger than that. Look at that. Oh, that's super small, way smaller than I thought. And then, uh, and then the remote comes in here. Also, very lightweight. Does that take batteries? does. It takes two AA batteries. That'll actually be nice, so I don't have to charge up the remote. You can just plug some batteries in and go. The quick reel and accessories and charger and mounts. Oh yeah. Okay. We got a charger and it comes with some universal adapters if you live in other countries. I'm almost positive this company is not from the US. I'm pretty sure they're from Sweden. I wanna say Sweden or something like that. All right, so this charger comes with a really funky little charging cable bit. And the only problem that I see with that is that if I lose this charger, that is, that is not a piece I can just go get at the store. If I lose this thing, this charger is very valuable to this viral. If you are entirely unfamiliar with this device, the basics is this. You string a rope up and then this thing opens like this. The rope goes under this one, over the middle bit, under the other side. And then with the remote control, I can, I can send this thing up and down that line. Now, the nice thing about that is that it can connect any camera underneath it up to up to 1.5 kilograms. Again, European company. How many pounds is 1.5 kilograms? 3.31 pounds. Okay, so you can put any camera below it as long as it doesn't add up to more than 3.31 pounds. Now I don't know how much my camera weighs, but I know a GoPro will not weigh it down. So today, I'm for sure gonna fly my GoPro. I'm gonna fly, definitely gonna fly the Insta360. I'll probably take it out of the Venture case for today. I just think if it's flying, it probably won't hit stuff. Okay, the back opens up to reveal the battery, which is, oh yeah. Okay, so this looks kind of like a remote control car battery. Maybe, maybe this connector is a common remote control car connector. 
So maybe I could get this at like a hobby shop. I don't know, I've never seen that before. I don't do a lot of remote control cars, but I've never seen that connector. And in my mind, if I lose this charger, I'm out of luck. But I, I don't know, there's the battery. Now the basis behind a cable cam in general, it's kind of a replacement for a drone shot. It's a shot that you might wanna get with a drone, but maybe you're in a spot where you can't fly a drone, or you're not supposed to fly a drone, or a spot where it would be difficult to fly a drone. I've seen videos where people kind of rig these up through really tight spots, and unless you're a really good drone pilot and you're just totally willing to go nah, through really crazy tight spots, you, you would wanna choose this instead. Also, with that battery, this thing has a three hour battery life, which is way longer than my drone. I have three drone batteries that each last about 20 minutes. So an hour total flight time on my drone and three hours on this thing. And that's just on one battery. You can, you can buy more batteries and just pop them in the back. That's pretty sweet, I do like that. All right, so that's the main cable cam bit. Has a, has a quarter inch 20 on the bottom. So I will find things that can mount to my quarter inch 20 and then we'll be good to go. Okay, what else is in here? Oh, beautiful. This is what I was gonna put on the bottom. This is a, a ball head. Perfect. So this little ball head will mount to the bottom. Then I can mount a camera to the ball head and then I can kind of angle it around, get it just how I like it and lock it in place. This. This is pretty much gonna live on here. I don't know why I would ever take it off. All right, cable cam, remote. All right, here is their quick reel. This uh, very bright paracord, kind of a thin paracord, but basically you hook this end on something and then this thing. <laughs> See, this is why it's fun that we're all learning together. Oh yeah, there we go. Once it's out, you can, you can use this as a reel. Look at that. We're gonna test this out more outside. I, ah oh crap. Okay, that's the quick reel. This is a 50 meter line, which <sighs> I think meters are similar to yards. They're close. I'm gonna say this is like 150 feet. Let's ask Siri. How many feet is 50 meters? 164.04 oh. feet. More than I thought, 164 feet of cable you get. That's a long, that's a long way for it to run. What else is in here? Okay, this, this is the strap that goes around your end point. Oh, one, attach. Oh, you just attached it to itself. Okay, roger, roger, roger. So this goes around a tree and then just kind of hooks onto itself. Now that's pinned up. Then you hook this piece to the quick reel and tighten it all down. Again, we'll play with this outside. And lastly, in the box are these two little guys. Ah, these are stoppers. So these can go at the ends of the line and you put it like five or six feet away from the tree or post or whatever you're hooked to so that if you aren't paying attention and you're hauling ass and it gets to the end, your camera and rig doesn't just go boom into a tree, it'll hit the brake and this will supposedly derail this whole piece and then it hangs by the center one. We'll test that and see if it works. There's a user manual also. Eh, it seems like it makes sense. All right, that is the Viral Light main box that you get and this is all the stuff that's in it. Next up though, they sent over some accessories as well. Travel case. And inside, it has pre-cut slots for everything. I do like this. This, this I think I'm gonna use. Oh, kind of annoying. Viral light, this piece has gotta come off. You have to remove the ball head for this to fit properly into, how in the crap, what? Much better. That's how it goes. Yeah, good tight fit, I like that. What else fits in here? The travel case looks like this when packed. That's kind of nice, and nothing. It's not super tight. I was gonna say nothing falls out, but don't shake it like that. <laughs> this guy's an idiot, he broke his little toy the first day, he got it. 
All right, like I was saying, all the things fit on this side, and then this side has a big pocket to, it looks like, fit the reel, and I bet the straps will fit in here as well. There we go. The whole setup, travel case. That's dope. Does it zip? Oh yeah, look at that. Boom! Viral light travel case, the whole thing in there. They also sent over their 100 meter line. That's cool. And the 100 meter line also comes with a set of its own straps. What's the unboxing? I'm trying to think of a spot that I already know of that I could run this up from, like a pier or something like that. That would be really cool, maybe underneath like the Oceanside Pier from, from one pylon to another. But I'm pretty much just gonna throw this in my bag, head to the beach, and see what I can find. One week later. I've gotten to play with the viral light three or four times now since I shot that first little bit. Getting footage with the viral, I think is a little tricky and there's a bit of a learning curve as far as how to set up the line, the height to set it up, exactly how to get your camera dialed to get the shot that you want, I think is a little tricky and I'm still getting used to it. But as far as setup goes, it is super easy. The whole line and everything was set up in three minutes and I was ready to fly the viral in about four or five minutes. Yeah, it's super easy. The whole the whole system is just it's just this line and then and then snapping that thing on there. So it's super easy to set up and break down. And uh oh. I also found out super quick that the physical stoppers, these wait, the physical stoppers that you put on the line are super important and they work. I was in sport mode, which is way faster than I can fly in here. And I hit the stopper, it derailed it immediately, which basically just makes it so that this bit pops off and then, and then it just kind of hangs there and you can't do anything until you go fix it. <laughs> I went into sport mode and I already tested out the stopper. Look what it did. It, uh, it just made the arms pop off it hangs by this top bit here and it, it threw the stopper on the ground. But they work really well, almost too well. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Hang on. The next thing I did was fly a GoPro underneath it and the Insta360, which pointed out one kind of flaw that I see in this whole system. And it's that with anything but the Insta360, there's no pan ability. So if I have a GoPro underneath it and I get the GoPro set up in this angle right here, now I can slide up and down the line, but I can't look around at all. And the problem with that is that if I have a subject and I'm like this, I kind of just fly past it. It works if you're going up the line and you point it straight at the line and you get this like really long shot like this, where you're maybe moving through a crowd or something like that. That would work really well, but without a pan ability, it's a little limiting. But that's where the Insta360 comes in. Because with the Insta360, you reframe and post. So you can fly past something, and as you're going by it in post, you can make it so that it actually pans around the subject. So I got this thing set up in the park outside between two trees. I then put Eleanor and Morgan on a blanket in the middle, and I flew past them like like show. <laughs> it is really fun to play with. <laughs> and with the Insta360, I can make it so it's a pan shot that as I go by them, it kind of pans. I set it up again near the fountain on the GoPro and the GoPro just kind of yeah, goes past them, which, which I think there's still a place for that kind of shot. And, and I want to make it work. I'm going to play with this thing a ton more. Again, this is just the first look, but there's a place for that shot. I just wish there was some ability that I could pan the camera underneath it. My second small issue with the camera is that it does get some of this kind of movement. Not that much, but a little bit of sway on the rope. It kind of swings back and forth. And with the stabilization on the Insta360, you don't notice that sway very much, but on a GoPro, you definitely do. A GoPro has kind of that one locked frame and any sort of movement that you're doing like this, 
you're gonna see the movement in it. So I would say if you're gonna use a GoPro or you're gonna use a fixed lens type system underneath the wire roll, definitely shoot in 4K as wide as you can and stabilize in post and maybe crop in a little bit. As a first look at the wire roll light, what do I think about it? I think one, it's a really well-made product. I'm super impressed with the build quality, super impressed with the ease of use running the thing. I only had to look up in the manual how to set the digital endpoints. Otherwise, I was able to set it up, hook it up, and fly it without reading the manual at all. As for actual usage of the device, I think, I think there's a specific user base for this. I think this replaces the drone shot when you can't get a drone shot. I think this is a slider shot, but way longer than any slider shot you could ever create. I think this would be sweet for time lapses, being able to do really long, slow time lapses. And I think it's also sweet to replace kind of a jib shot over like a big crowd. If you were in an auditorium or a concert hall, something like that, and you strung this thing up beforehand, put it on one of the ends and you were able to fly it over the crowd, that's something you're not allowed to do with drones. So there is a use case for this. I do like it a lot and I'm super excited to test it out more. I really wanna fly it at one of Morgan's shows and go to the concert venue ahead of time and get it rigged up beforehand and then have this thing like flying over. I just don't know if I'd put the Insta360 or the GoPro underneath it at that point. <sighs> I don't know, but I'm gonna test that in the future for sure. Yeah, I like it. I'm impressed. Wire light, very impressed. I'm for sure gonna use it more and and at some point, I'll go a little more in depth with this thing and, and show off more footage that I get with it. But, but for today, that's, that's it. That was, this thing's a lot of fun to play with. Sport mode on this thing is ridiculous. Oh, shit. <laughs> Still works, I didn't break it. I almost broke it though. <laughs> oh, that would've sucked. Oh, my only other downside is that I did break the 100 meter line because one of the stoppers bit into the line. I had the stopper set up and was hauling ass in sport mode, like one does. And when it hit it, oh yeah, look at that. Look at that, it frayed the rope. It, it like bit and then just ripped the whole top bit off. So I think I'm just gonna cut it right here and then retie it to the clip and I'll have a I'll have a 95 meter line. <laughs> yeah, I can fix this. This I can fix. Alright. Give this a cut like that. What kind of knot? Bam! Fixed it! So now I have a uh, now I have a 95 meter line ish. But but it's fixed. Okay, I think that's it for the unboxing. This thing's sweet. I do like it a lot, and I'm going to use it a whole bunch more coming up in some future videos. And, uh, and yeah, if you watch this video, when you see that footage, you'll be like, oh, I know how I shot that. That's the Insta360.